We got another Nuverse Pro episode for you from Utah for House Hack. Welcome to a two-in-one from the 20s plus a basement. Now, you know in my Nuverse Pro series, we like talking about what the noobs like to do and what the pros like to do. And many of you have heard me talk about wedge deals, finding a fixture upper you could add value to. Well, there are properties that you want to add value to and there are properties you don't even wanna to touch you're going to find out what kind of property this is. Let's get started here. So most people, even the noobs, are gonna pull this off. They're gonna look at a property like this and say, oh, it's probably got hardwood floor underneath the carpet, right? And the answer to that is, yes, it does. It's got your one and a half inch oak, and this is a pretty typical uh, 1920s style property. You'll find them uh, pretty much throughout the United States, very common, and people will refinish these hardwood floors. Often you can tell, and the pro will know this versus a noob, but a pro will look and see, can we see any nail heads coming through? And sometimes when we see nail heads, it's just a sign that it's been refinished in the past multiple times, and there might be a limited lifespan left. Now, another thing that I like to, I don't see nail heads here, so that's good. Now, another thing that I notice as I kneel here, and you'll have to come around to see it, but I can actually see the tiling kind of sneaking up towards the tub over there, and then the floor, it might be hard to see on the camera towards the back, also divoting right in the middle of this, the hallway here and coming back up. It's not uncommon for these raised foundation homes to have sagging in different parts of the property, but these are issues that you're going to want to inspect underneath. A lot of these homes when they were built were built on piers that were really just stacked together blocks of rock. And if you have a lot of these that have rotted away or the rocks have started falling away, you're going to be adding a lot of expense per pier just to get the property jacked back into place. You could be looking at 700, 1200 bucks per pier, and you start adding 20 piers together, it starts getting expensive. You go down there and you're like, okay, we got two piers to do over here and it solves most of the issue, maybe that's not that bad. But now this means going underneath the property. Some more work to do here. Now remember, I like looking for properties as a pro would do, rather than just being a sort of a noob going, okay, oh, oh Kevin says buy a fixer upper. I like looking at the property and going, okay, well, what upgrades do we have? Well, this is actually an upgrade from 1970. It's an upgraded aluminum window, but it's trash. It's garbage. You don't want that anymore. The original windows in this property would have been these. These are your uh, original wood windows right here. It's a single pane window. Uh, and this is an operable single pane window, although it's mostly been painted shut. Can't even get the darn thing open anymore. Get the alarm sensors wired in over here. Very common for these to be painted shut. Uh, the pro also looks at these and says most of these are painted with an oil-based paint. A lot of people did not know. They went over these with a latex and it peels right off. You're probably looking at uh, a lot of leaded paints in some of the underlying coats of paint as well. Hey, you wanna get a good deal on multifamily or single family real estate? Check out my programs on building your wealth, link down below. So you're at a millionaire real estate investing, do yourself property management and rental renovations. And of course, you can consider shadowing me now as well. The link to below, we've brought back shadowing after selling out the first time around. Let's go. And even though this property has my favorite style of kitchen, this property doesn't feel like the property that's actually had any pride of ownership. Now, I don't know what could that give that away, but I'll, let's just put it this way. The kind of person who's going to find this kind of living environment acceptable with the splattered grease and this nasty and the damage to the countertop, unless it was a hoarder of some kind, but I mean, this is quite nasty too, uh, putting up a foil here to catch the oil as you're cooking rather than just cleaning it every time. Uh, and, and I mean, just look, this is, this should go to tell you, I mean, you've got rat droppings in here basically. Uh, this should go to tell you that this is not somebody who had any respect for the property at all. Uh, but it's not just that, because I can clean stuff like that up. We can put in new cabinets. Where it becomes a problem is when you looking at, when you start looking at the systems of a property. And that's what the noob forgets. The noob says, well, every property I go into is going to be a fixer-upper anyway, so I'm gonna have to deal with all the crap anyway. That's not necessarily true. When you go into a quality remodel, you're not gonna find these open 1950s junction boxes that are just old trash wiring spliced together with knob and tube garbage. What you want is ideally, you want like a you know, 1990s grandma who came in here and redid all the electrical, redid the plumbing, did the foundation work, did the water heater, the windows, the furnace, but she's still got the old 90s kitchen cabinets and the old flooring and the dated wallpaper and the old paint. This is disgusting. It's probably 
I'm not going to use the M word, but it's probably some drug use on this one. You still got an original, well, it's probably not original, but you had an ancient furnace over here. You could see the work that was done relatively basic, if not near shoddy on, on some of the water heater uh, work here. Uh, no smitty pan, you know, the funky pressure relief um, PEX pipe over here. Uh, the piping over or the, the venting over here doesn't look terrible, but could be better. Certainly seen much more professional installs. You're uh, going to find these properties are also lath and plaster. What that means is you have lath and plaster. See, lath is this wood. This is plaster, which makes it really hard for you to hang pictures. You find this mildew and mold, uh, mostly uh, sort of a window mildew here. You're going to find a lot more of that mold and issue over here. Uh, this is all subterranean. This is in your basement over here. So pretty disgusting over here. Uh, these are these are all expensive issues. And in an old house like this, there's nothing salvageable really. Everywhere you look, it's damage, it's rot, everything has to be redone. Frankly, this is, I mean, it's not a teardown, but it would be, you would get more out of this lot tearing it down almost. I know we can fix it up, but this is probably not something I would do because it would cost me too much money. I would have to do uh, the foundation, the roof, the plumbing, the uh, drainage around the property, the water heater, the windows, the furnace, and then I get to the cosmetics. And by that point, I've spent a lot of money. I mean, every door is broken. Every baseboard is damaged. The ceiling's moldy. Uh, I mean, you can see the water stains over here. Uh, everywhere you look, it's damaged. I don't even have a functional ceiling throughout most of the property. It's rough. Even you go into the bedroom, and what do you get in the bedroom? Yet another corner with mildew, yet another broken set of doors, more paint that I have to drywall fix because it hasn't been fixed in forever, more windows that I have to replace, and now I'm in a neighborhood where look at this. I got a neighbor who has the original window here. They replaced the back window, but they never trim molded that window out properly. You could see the funky trim around their window. So even if you remodel yours, you're next to somebody who leaves all this trash out uh, and, and does funky remodels themselves. Older roof as well, no chimney cap. I mean, what is that, that barn back there? I mean, what, you're gonna come in this neighborhood and remodel to live next to this? And then don't even get me started on your own garage. And I know this one's not much better, but I'm just saying, if you're gonna come remodel, look at your garage. That is literally a teardown. The roof is rotted away. Uh, it's, uh, this is just an example where a, a true pro will actually say, yes, it is a fixer. Everybody knows it's a fixer, but it's so much of a fixer that it's actually dangerous. It is a dangerous property uh, to consider because there's so much to do. And beyond that, a noob looks and goes, oh, I can do this. You know, I'll slap some paint around. Bro, no, you're not. You're not slapping paint around all the wooded rot, uh, rotten frames and all the mold and trash electrical splices. I mean, whoever left the property like this, you know the electrical junction, wherever they put all of our electrical junctions in the walls or in the substructure, we're going to be janky and trash. I don't even want to know what's going on down there. And if you think like, and I'm, you know, under, under this portion, beyond the part that we were able to access, uh, I'm talking about where the actual junctions are, which are usually when they have basements in sort of the, uh, the closeted areas. I don't even go into those. Uh, but uh, not only that, some people are like, oh, but you've got an attic up here, right? Well, don't expect to go into this. Some of these older properties, you've actually, actually surprisingly have got a little bit more room over here. A lot of these older uh, properties have relatively flat roofs and there's very limited space. This is actually a benefit. So while I was going to say you have to be careful on these 1920s homes because a lot of them are flat roofs and you have basically this much space. So in other words, you wanna add can lights, you just have to rip the ceiling down, which is lath and plaster, so a lot harder than drywall. That is actually the only good thing I've seen so far of this property is that you have an accessible attic. Uh, usually you don't uh, on, on some of the older properties like this. But anyway, uh, all that said, look, this is not something I would touch for my real estate startup, and it really isn't something anybody should touch unless they were getting a phenomenal deal. Would I touch it at a certain price? Of course. 
but the odds are I'm not gonna get it for the price that makes this make sense. Somebody else is gonna buy this thinking they're getting a good deal, and then they're gonna be one of those stories where they go in with a $50,000 budget and they come out $150,000 later and upside down on the deal. This is a very risky kind of property. And if you like my perspectives, make sure to consider shadowing me as I explore a real estate around the country or in our local market. Also, check out my programs on building your wealth, especially the Zero to Millionaire Real Estate Investing course and the Do-It-Yourself Property Management and Rental Renovations course, link below.